What are we doing here? You're Birdman. You don't review movies. You go into action films and kick some ass. What are you doing here? This is not where you are supposed to be. You are supposed to be on screen while Tom Richardson reviews this movie, which he's about to do. So, hey, guys, um, that was my Birdman impression. Um, and uh, throughout this movie, Michael Keaton always hears the voice of Birdman, the character he once played in a film, um, you know, fictionally, obviously. And uh, this guy's kind of his ego talking to himself throughout this movie. So anyway, guys, I am going to review Birdman for you today. It is an independent film that not a lot of theaters seem to be getting a lot lately. So hopefully we'll get a wide release at some point. Hopefully the maybe the attention or maybe the positive reviews will get the distribution to get it into more theaters um, throughout the year. So anyway, guys, in Birdman, the plot of the movie is basically a washed up actor is trying to... Um, Get his acting career up and going again. He uh, really hasn't been doing anything since the early 90s. And when he did act, he was most well known for playing a character named Birdman, who was a superhero franchise. And so he wants to get into stage acting. And he has this Broadway play that he's been wanting to do for years. And um, he, you know, wants to do this stage performance. And he's hoping that, you know, people will love it enough that they'll kind of forget about his Birdman role and, you know, um, respect him for these new roles that he's taking on. Um, also at home, you know, he has a daughter that just got out of rehab that he really hasn't been a good father to. Um, Edward Norton plays an actor who joins his play at the last minute. And they, you know, him, Michael Keaton and Edward Norton don't get along too well in this play. So there's things like that going on. So basically throughout this movie, it's about this actor staying relevant. People telling him that, you know, he's going to be stuck in this Birdman image forever. And he wants to get out of that image. He wants the Birdman ego to go away. Um, he wants the Birdman voice in his head to go away and, you know, stop telling him to do certain things. So basically that that's basically the plot of Birdman. So for my positives and negatives of... Birdman, it does have a lot to say about washed up actors, um, public image, and the entertainment criticism. Uh, it just really, you know, it really shows, you know, kind of what Mark Hamill went through when he played Luke Skywalker, what Christopher Reeves went through when um, he played Superman, and, you know, what Christian Bale might be going through a little bit um, after playing Batman in The Dark Knight, and what Michael Keaton probably went through after he played Batman. So, uh, and also with public image, you know, you know, that goes back to, you know, the Birdman voice talking to him, telling him that, you know, Birdman is really the only thing going for him and anything outside of that will not work for him. Um, and, you know, he's worried that, you know, people are always going to remember him in that just that one role only. But yet he wants to be known for other roles outside of Birdman. And then for entertainment criticism, um, I won't go into spoilers, obviously, but there is a good portion of the film where Keaton and this... Um, film critic at a bar are talking to each other, you know, how kind of how, you know, she hates him and all that kind of stuff. Like I said, I don't want to get into detail too much, but it does have a lot to say about entertainment criticism, and it comes up at a point where you might think it might not come up, but it does. Um, and then for another positive of Birdman, it has a really good first-person narrative. I liked the Birdman voice that Michael Keaton had. It definitely was in the same vein as of his Batman voice, and I liked that, but I liked how it was different enough that you can tell it was, you know, this different character and not Batman. And then my other big positive, too, is I think Michael Keaton's performance in this was very good. Um, I don't think he'll win an Oscar, but I won't be shocked if he gets nominated. I think he did do a very good job in this movie. And, um, you know, his performance way back in the late 80s, early 90s of Batman um, really kind of made it more fun here because, you know, we saw, we saw him as Batman, and that movie was actually trying to be serious. And, you know, we see him as Birdman here, and it's definitely more for comedic value. But it, it was very fun. It, you know, it was very dramatic and funny from Keaton, and I think he's very good at both of those things. Uh, what's kind of unique about Birdman, this goes to my, my next positive, is the editing style of this film really makes it want to look like it's taken in one shot, like there, the camera was never turned off throughout this feature length film, that, you know, rather than doing, you know, like transitions or cutting the black, um, we really feel like we're following these people around, um, and, you know, because it's all taking place in the theater for the most part, 
Um, we really don't ever, ever have to really cut to black because we're, you know, we're following these people around. And I would say Birdman probably takes place over the course of a few days. So, you know, that being said, and, you know, even the cameras kept on and, you know, it shows, you know, nighttime going into daytime. And, you know, we follow Michael Keaton around and Edward Norton around. Um, it was just the way they shot it was very unique. And you can definitely tell they used a lot of editing and they had to really make everything precise in the shots, um, you know, made sure everything looked exactly the same the day before. So obviously they had to do a lot of stuff to make sure that this one shot editing style looked really impressive. And then for my negatives of Burman, because it's not quite a perfect film, is I thought there were some overly cheesy fantasy elements and I thought it was kind of overkill after a while. Um, you know, we, we definitely have a reality-based story for the first half of the film. And in the second half, we know Michael Keaton can move things around with his mind and he can fly and he can do all these really over-the-top kind of stuff. And I don't know, for me, after a while, it felt like overkill. I really just wanted this story about this actor trying to stay relevant, getting respect from people again, um, you know, being respected for trying to take on these new roles and be respected and, you know, be known for those other roles rather than this Birdman role that he took on several years ago. So I don't know. I thought the, the fantasy elements were just a little bit overkilled after a while. And then throughout the film, too, there's some confusing reality versus play comparison moments. So there's scenes where, you know, Michael Keaton, you know, shows up on the stage when he's not supposed to, or he's doing something in this play during rehearsals or during the actual show that he's not supposed to. And they're trying to, you know, handle that information as if you know they're they're sharing michael keaton's thoughts or something currently going on with him in the movie in the form of this play in a scene of some kind and i don't know for me it just kind of felt a little bit confusing after a while and i didn't really like how that material was handled for those scenes um so i just once again i, I think that if they just stayed with the whole actors trying to stay relevant thing which really works well in a lot of scenes naomi watts is in the film and her character very much falls in the same vein as that um, I think if they just stick with that more often, I think the film would have really, really worked very well. And then for my last complaint with Birdman, um, I thought there was just some long stretches of nothing. Like I said, I know that they were trying to make this a one-shot editing style kind of film, which worked very well. But as a result, there were some scenes where like, we would be looking at a hallway for a good four or five minutes and nothing happens. Or we would be looking at you know the sky you know, showing daytime to nighttime, which works fine for the transition, but... It just there was just a lot of scene, things where nothing was happening for a good five or six minutes, and I don't know. I don't know whether to say they could have um, quickened the pace a little bit, or shot it differently, or maybe took a break from the one shot editing. Uh, something needed to happen because I mean there was just some really long shots of nothing going on in some scenes, and for me it just didn't quite work as well as maybe the director thought it was going to. So overall, guys, I'm going to give Birdman an 8.5 out of 10. I think it's a very well done film. It has a lot of things going for it. I highly recommend seeing it. It's definitely a film worth seeing. I'm definitely going to own it at some point. But at the same time, it's not quite a perfect film, like I said. I mean, the fancy elements were a little overdone. Uh, some scenes get a little confusing as to, you know, how the information was being handled. And there was just some long stretches of nothing at some points that really kind of got on my nerves after a while. But overall, Birdman's a very good film. I highly recommend seeing it. It's not quite the best film of the year. You know, I know a lot of people are saying it is. But it is worth checking out, and I really liked it. I hope you guys enjoyed it as well. So if you get a chance to see Birdman, make sure you do so. It is pretty good.